In addition to their standard enlisted groups, all branches of the United States Armed Forces have their own special units known as elite forces. The Rangers, the Green Berets, and the Night Stalkers are the three different units that make up the Army's special operations. When most people think of elite military units, the first thing that springs to mind is the Navy SEALs. However, it is not a problem for the Army because Special Forces soldiers, who are known as the silent professionals of the Army, prefer to remain unnoticed. Recruiters pay frequent visits to Fort Sill and other installations in the search for male and female officers and enlisted personnel who believe they possess the necessary combination of character traits and skills to wear the coveted Special Forces Green Beret or to be a part of one of the three other Army Special Operations Forces RSOF, branches. Here we will talk about elite military training and its insights. Before we move any further subscribe us now. On August 3, 2018, three junior officers were present at the Graham Resiliency Training Center in order to acquire additional information regarding the opportunities. Additionally, one sergeant came by in order to hand in his application packet as a follow, up to an earlier visit. SGT. Salat El Bora who is literate in Arabic and can write the language as well, stated that he desired something more than what is provided by his current post. He remarked, I'm looking forward to working in an environment that's more challenging. The officers were shown a video presentation about each branch of the military by SGT. First Class Kiel Mulhern, Center Leader for the Fort Riley Special Operations Recruiting Battalion, Airborne, and Staff SGT. Zachary Wongeren, Recruiter for the same unit, they were also informed of the requirements for their application packets during this time. According to Mulhern, officers aspiring to the rank of lieutenant must fall within a particular age range. And they only have one chance to submit their application. Enlisted ranks from E3 to E7 are also eligible for recruitment and have the opportunity to reapply in the event that their initial application is denied. According to Wangaran, only a small fraction of active, Duty soldiers are even aware that a career in the RSOF is a choice for them in their military service. In addition to achieving a score of at least 240th on the Army Physical Fitness Test and a score of 107 or higher on the General Technical GT, test, 110 or higher on the GT test or 110 on the Combat Score for Special Forces, applicants are required to be citizens of the United States. They will all learn a foreign language and be airborne qualified by the time they have completed their training which can take up to 52 weeks or more to fully qualify them for a multifaceted job in one of the four branches. They will all have completed their training by the time they have completed their training. In addition, all RSOF members receive a range of additional money, the amount of which can vary from $100 to $1.000 per month just for the languages alone. In addition to this, RSOF soldiers typically advance through the ranks more quickly. Secure the victory. After receiving extensive training for a period of 13 months at Fort Bragg in North Carolina, the Civil Affairs section of RSOF is now prepared to survive in surroundings that are rich in cultural diversity. They collaborate with conventional troops, the nations that are hosting the conflict, and special forces in order to undermine and marginalize resistance forces. In addition to this, they carry out humanitarian work during times of peace, such as providing disaster aid, vaccines, and running water. They are well, versed in the culture of the host nation and collaborate with U.S. Ambassadors and local community leaders to help avoid boots on the ground, which could inflame hostilities. Their goal is to prevent conflict and help avoid situations that could lead to hostilities. According to Mulhern, they first attempt to resolve the issue through diplomatic channels. You'll become cultural specialists. A civil affairs team typically consists of an officer two non-commissioned officers, and a medic who possesses enhanced medical skills. Additionally, the team may also include an interpreter. Influence, persuade, and change in others. In support of special forces teams, United States ambassadors, allies, and coalition partners, the Psychological Operations, or PSYOP, regiment engages in psychological warfare to influence the actions, behavior, values, beliefs, and attitudes of citizens and communities. This is done through the use of psychological operations, or PSYOP. According to Mulhern, they strive to get the host nation to coincide with U.S. interests. 
citation needed, citation needed, they are given impossible tasks to complete during their training, which focus more on their mental capacities than their physical talents. Typical deployments last for a period of six months and involve teams of three to 12 people. These teams also call Fort Bragg, North Carolina, home base. De oppresso liber, to free the oppressed. The special forces, often known as the Green Berets, are the most highly trained and specialized group in the Arsof. They don't like people to know what they're doing and why they're doing it, said Mulhern. They don't like people to know what they're doing. They enjoy performing responsibilities that are less visible. According to Mulhern, unconventional warfare can only be conducted by the United States Special Forces because Congress has given them permission to do so. Even the Navy SEALs are unable to participate in these kinds of operations, which involve collaborating with local resistance organizations to oust leaders and bring about more regional stability. In addition to that, they take part in activities such as counterterrorism, special reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and direct action of a limited length. In order to earn the highly coveted position of Green Beret, each member of the Alpha team undergoes rigorous training for at least 60, 4 weeks. Stalkers of the Night The 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, Airborne, is responsible for providing worldwide precision air assaults, aerial gunnery, and no, notice rotary wing assistance. To be eligible for this position, a soldier must be serving in one of the permitted military occupational specialties. Learning a new language It is essential for RSOF teams to be able to communicate in the native tongue of the country in which they are stationed. For team members who are not already fluent in a foreign language, training is provided to learn one. The Defense Language Aptitude Battery DLAB, is an aptitude exam that cannot be prepared for because it measures an individual's capacity for acquiring a language rather than their existing level of knowledge in that language. A fundamental understanding of the workings of the English language, including grammar, sentence formation, and the many components of speech, is essential for gaining an understanding of how the DLAB's fake language functions. If you have the necessary scores, learning Category I languages like French, Italian, and Spanish will be more simpler for you than learning other languages. Category II languages include German, while Category IV languages include Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Category 2 languages include German. This is it for today's video. Let us know in the comments section that what do you think of this elite military training. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel.